Hello. In this video, we are going to talk about the practical integrator, uh, also referred to as the AC integrator. And we can notice from the circuit schematic that it is almost identical to the ideal integrator circuit, with the exception that there is um, a resistor RF added in parallel with the feedback capacitor. The reason why the resistor was added is to overcome the limitation of the ideal integrator. If you recall, um, at low frequencies or even DC, the problem with the ideal integrator is that you had your capacitor in your feedback loop, your feedback path, and uh, at DC frequencies, the capacitor will behave as an open circuit, and therefore your op-amp is operating in open loop configuration, and it will saturate. By introducing the RF resistor, you prevent a saturation problem because even at DC frequencies, there will always be a path for the current to go. Um, so you'll never be operating open loop. Let's go ahead and analyze this circuit in the frequency domain because that's going to be simpler. And in order to do that, I'm going to replace the uh, values of the components with their uh, frequency domain equivalents. So my input voltage and output voltage will become their phase or equivalents. Uh, the resistances in, in the frequency domain, the impedance of a resistor is just the resistance. And the impedance of a capacitor will be 1 over J omega C. And uh, the transfer function for this circuit, H of J omega, will be the ratio of V out phasor to V in phasor. Um, and notice that you can also do this analysis if you're more comfortable operating uh, in the S domain, the complex frequency domain, as opposed to utilizing J omega, you can do that. I'm going to proceed with phasors, but if you were to replace J omega with um, S, the, um, the analysis of the circuit will be identical. Now notice that this uh, resembles the structure of an inverting amplifier, where the, um, the feedback impedance, if you will, is the parallel combination of the impedance of the capacitor and the resistor RF, and then there is an input impedance RI, and so you can basically state generally the, the gain or the transfer function in this case, because we're in the frequency domain, will be equal to negative um, ZF over Z in. Uh, feedback impedance over input impedance. And so the feedback impedance will be the parallel combination of RF and 1 over J omega C. And uh, the input impedance will simply be RI. That parallel combination we can express as the product of the impedances divided by the sum. So RF times 1 over J omega C divided by RF plus 1 over J omega C. All that divided by RI. And so we could express that as RF negative uh, divided by J omega C. All that divided times RI times um, RF plus 1 over J omega C, which will basically be I So I can um, take RF and RI factor them out, and so it will be negative RF over Ri times uh, 1 over J omega C divided by RF plus 1 over J omega C. And I can um, multiply numerator and denominator by J omega, and then divide numerator and denominator by RF, and I will be left with negative RF over Ri times 1 over Rf times C divided by J omega plus 1 over Rf times C. And um, this is the standard form for a first order low pass filter, where we will have the transfer function for a first order low pass filter. It will be some gain term um, K times um, cutoff frequency omega C divided by J omega plus the cutoff frequency omega C. And that's exactly what we have. Uh, we have uh, the response of a single pole low pass filter where the gain or the proportionality constant is negative RF over RI. If I were to plot the magnitude response of this circuit, meaning the magnitude of the transfer function as a function of frequency versus frequency, and if I were to plot it in dBs, I will have something that looks like this a flat. 
a pass band and then um, a decay at negative 20 dB per decade. And that will start at the cutoff frequency or minus 3 dB frequency omega c, or in this case fc since we are plotting versus f. Notice that fc is simply 1 over 2 pi rf times c since omega c is equal to 1 over rf times c. Um, the value of the magnitude in the passband will be equal to uh, 20 times the log base 10 of rf divided by ri and that will be at dc when the value of uh, omega is equal to zero. Now uh, notice that this uh, magnitude response resembles the one of the ideal integrator for frequencies greater than the cutoff frequency. If you recall, the magnitude of the ideal integrator looks something like this, where it was it just kept going. It never became flat because it didn't have any any uh, poles other than the pole at zero. Whereas this one. Um, goes flat and then basically starts to decay at minus 20 dBs per decade. But what that means, so I'm going to label this is the ideal integrator. And the other one is the first order low pass filter, which we have also labeled as the practical or AC integrator. The reason why it's called the AC integrator is obvious is because it behaves as an integrator uh, for frequencies that are higher than the cutoff frequency. And so the idea is that you will not be amplifying, you will be cutting off your amplification for DC frequencies. So you're essentially only uh, performing integration on the AC portion of the signal. Um, if we had, for example, an input signal, let's imagine that was um, a square wave. What we will expect to see if we were uh, performing low pass filtering is that the edges will be rounded because the edges represent uh, fast changes or high frequencies, right? And so we will expect to see something like this. And so one might argue, well, that's not uh, the integral of the signal above. But notice that we will be seeing something like this. Let's imagine that this is my V in. This will be the value of V out or the, the look of V out. As long as our um, frequency was lower than the cutoff frequency or or not too much higher than the cutoff frequency. Um, I'm going to say Gonna express it better like this: the cut of the frequency of the signal is not much higher than the cut of frequency. For cases where the frequency of the signal is much higher than the cut of frequency, uh, then the value of the circuit will approach more and more that of an ideal integrator, and so it will be um, essentially a triangular wave. Now notice that I didn't represent that in the in the top signal. But this is an integrating type of circuit, and so when the input is going positive, the output of the circuit is going negative and vice versa. And likewise, let's imagine this is my zero line. When the value of my input signal um, is positive, my slope goes negative, and when the output of my the input is negative, my slope goes positive, and so forth. Um, and so we can see that it behaves as a low pass filter uh, for certain range of frequencies, but for frequencies much higher than the cut of frequency, um, it behaves as an integrator as it integrates at the square signal. Thank you.